The Giant Trance 29er is probably the most requested bike on my YouTube channel. And thanks to Giant stepping up to the plate and supporting my channel, I now have my hands on the new Giant Trance 29er. So this particular bike is the Trance Advanced 1. This is the second tier down from their top of the line Carbon Trance 29er. And it's also the exact model that I would go out and buy. I love the spec of this bike. So what we're gonna do in this video is take an up close look at this bike. Now my first look videos are where I just show the bike up close. I've actually not ridden this thing on the trail. So in my series of reviews, I like to do a first look, get the components and everything out of the way. So my follow up videos, we can just talk about the ride quality. So without further ado, let's take a good close up look at this bike. Now, I don't know how this color is going to show up on your computer or tablet or phone, but I can tell you in person, this metallic green is killer. I love the color of this bike. Now, this is an all carbon frame, so somewhat new for this year. Giant is making not only the front triangle, but also the rear triangle carbon. Now, I've been riding the Trans Advanced 27.5 for several years. I've had several editions of that bike. And I've also, by the way, been riding the Specialized Stump Jumper 29er for the last couple months, kind of comparing the 27.5 and the 29. That's a whole separate topic, whole separate video. But the previous Trance Advanced uh, bikes that I've had are an aluminum rear end, whereas this is now carbon. And of course, the Maestro Link is going to be carbon just like the previous Trance 27.5s. This bike comes with the Fox DPX2, which is a shock with the piggyback reservoir. And I can tell you, by riding this shock on my Trance 27.5, it is phenomenal. Uh, it has really good pedaling platform. You know, when you open this thing fully up on a descent, it is so plush. It allows the rear tire to stay just glued to the trail. And speaking of which, you would move that to the middle setting for your pro pedal. All the way forward is going to be the firmest setting. I'll let you know once I ride the bike if that's fully locked out. On my Trance 27.5, there's still a tad bit of movement in the shock, but it's firm enough where you can get out of the saddle. Now this bike does come with 115 millimeters of rear travel, and that's kind of the wild card for me. So my Trance 27.5 is 140 millimeters of travel, so quite a bit more travel. Some of the reviews I'm reading and hearing so far say that this bike feels like it has more than 115 millimeters of travel, but I will definitely be talking about that as I do my reviews of this bike. Cable routing on this bike is very clean. It has the same type of cable routing that I have on my Trance 27.5. So you've got your dropper posts going in there and the dropper post stays internal through the frame all the way to the dropper post so you don't see it once it goes into the frame. And then rear brake and rear shifter come into the frame here and they come out at the bottom. And of course the rear brake runs along the chain stay up to the rear brake. And the rear derailleur pops out there and it's full cable housing by the way, which makes it super easy to change the inner wire. Moving on to the front suspension, you do have a Fox fork. And this is a fork with 34 millimeter stanchion tubes and it is 130 millimeters of travel. So 20 millimeters less than my Trance 27.5. The fork that comes on this bike has the Fox grip damper. These forks are a little bit less expensive than the float forks with the fit damper. So my Trance 27.5 has the fit for damper. Now I've used this fork on an alloy Trance and to be perfectly honest, I did not notice much of a difference between this and the Fit Forward Damper. Now you do lose some of the fine tuning capabilities of this fork, particularly with the Fit Forward, you can adjust how firm it is in the open setting where this is kind of, you know, all the way over there is fully open and it gets firmer and firmer and firmer as you get to right there and that should be totally locked out. And the grip damper forks do not have the Kashima coating but I do like this black coating. And like I've said in some of my other videos, I don't really miss the Kashima coating on the Fox Forks that don't have it. Let's look at the cockpit of the bike. So you've got the Giant Contact SL saddles. I've used several of these. They're very comfortable. I like the fact that they have the anatomical cutout. You've got a stubby little stem on this that I think is a 40. 
I'll have to look online to tell you for sure. Or I'll post that when I do the video. Uh, but I like the short stem on these newer crop of trail bikes. I also like wider bars. And these are 780. 780 may be a little bit too wide for some people, but the good thing about handlebars is you can cut them down if they're too wide. Looking at the brakes, these come with the SRAM Guide T brakes. So these brakes do not have the external tools-free reach adjustment, which I actually do miss. Uh, you have to use an Allen wrench. But you know, once you get, a, get them adjusted, uh, they're pretty much set. Both front and rear rotors on this bike are 180s, so you will have plenty of stopping power. And I know this may be minor, but I'm really glad that the SRAM mountain bike brakes use Allen bolts to adjust the calipers. The road ones use the Torx bolts, which I cannot stand. So you do get Allen bolts on this bike, if that matters to you. And as expected on a bike of this caliper, you do have boost spacing. So you've got a 110 by 15 front axle and a 148 by 12 rear axle. And like most modern trail bikes today, this bike does not have quick releases. So you would use a six millimeter Allen wrench on both the front and the rear to pull the axle out. And of course, when you're riding through rocks and things like that, uh, you do not want a quick release sticking out. For shifting, you've got SRAM GX Eagle, which in my experience has been flawless. Like I said, I've been using this on my Trance 27.5 and now even on the Stump Jumper 29er. And it works so well. So of course it has the super wide cassette that goes from a 10 all the way up to, up to a 50. And I don't expect any less performance, but of course I'll report how it works on this bike on my follow-up reviews. And finally, looking at the wheels, you've got Giant's hookless carbon wheels. And so that's one thing, like I've mentioned in some other videos that sets Giant apart from some other brands is the fact that at the same price level, uh, you would jump up to carbon rims. And I love carbon rims on a mountain bike. It makes the bikes handle so well, so precise. It just really improves the ride quality of the bike. For tires on the front, you've got the Maxxis Minion DHF. It's a 29 by 2.3. And the back has the Minion DHR2. It also is a 2.3 tire. And this bike, by the way, comes totally tubeless, does not come with tubes. So all you would need to do is put the sealant in that Giant does include with the bike air it up and you're good to go is tubeless. Crank set on this bike is a 175. Now one thing interesting about Specialized is they've included a 170 crank instead of the 175, which reduces pedal strikes. But with this 29er, I'll report back how this bike does. That's the only complaint really that I've had with my 27.5 Trance is I can get pedal strikes, especially when going up a steep hill that has rocks and roots. There have been times I've bashed the pedal into the rock or root, but with a 29 or the bottom bracket, it's gonna be higher off the ground. So I'll report back what I feel about this length crank set. The weight of the Trance Advanced Pro 1 29er with the Shimano XT pedals that I have on everything else is right out of the box. Comes in at 28.86 pounds. So that's gonna wrap up this first look at the Giant Trance Advance 29.1. Super stoked about getting some ride time on this bike. That's coming up very soon. I'll do my first ride video where you can come along with me as I throw my leg over this bike for the first time. I'll post that in a few days. And then of course, I'll be following up that video a few months down the road with a longer term report. Questions or comments that you have about this bike or this video, go ahead and drop those below. Thanks for watching.